Hi everybody, I'm glad you're joining me today where I'm going to talk about a very essential matter, of course, and it's all about not adding anything to Christ, just Christ. That's all it's about, the message of Jesus. We're not to add to him, and some people, because that is very um, uh, abstract, People may not understand immediately what I mean by adding to Christ. And we can see many examples of what that really means when we read especially one really good example that we'll be focused on a lot today is in Galatians. And Galatians would paraphrase that, and I wrote these down just as a quick summary at the very beginning here. Uh, the terminology that's used. Uh, for instance, it literally, when you add to Christ, that means you're enslaved, that you're trying to keep or live by the law, as in Galatians 2 verse 4 and Galatians 2 verse 16. It means setting aside the grace of God, which is Galatians 2.21. Also, you could say when you add to Christ, you are turning away from Christ to another gospel, which is Galatians 1.6, uh, Romans 7 verse 3 and 4 refers to uh, being adulterous with another that's pretty powerful, isn't it? Very extreme. And also the uh, adjectives to describe somebody who is being deceived into adding to Christ. Because after all, this is very, uh, as I've said before, it's very... Um, sneaky of the enemy and it's also very appealing to Christians. So you put those two together and you got quite a mix. You got uh, a lot of, um, what's the word, synergistic effect, you know, where the, where the two meet together. The uh, uh, desire to live good, to live with good behavior and then also uh, the enemy's tactics. This is his main, really, his main weapon is, believe it or not, using the law to lead a Christian to live by. And that is significantly what Galatians is all about. That the whole book, although it's very short, but that is the main point that's being made in this book is that the Galatians have fallen into this major deception. And if the Christians back then fell into this major deception, how, uh, you know, how much it's also applicable to us today, of course, right? So we don't want to just uh, say, oh, well, that was for them back then. That doesn't apply to me today. Of course, living by the law is good. Well, you just revealed that you are deceived. <laughs> Ouch. You know, and if, if that's really foreign to you, hang on, because I will convince you with scriptures that this is not a game to be played with when we are uh, walking with the Lord. If you want to live a successful life, you want to not fall into this pit. You know, there's not too many places to go if you're in a pit, right? You're stuck. So you don't want to fall into this. Um, really, it is a sneaky trap of the enemy because don't we all, with, with our new natures as Christians, we want to live a holy life. That's our new nature. So it's very uh, easy to fall into this mentality 
this way of living that we have to abide by a strict list of good behavior and that is not the way to live by faith at all and as i was about to say some of the descriptions of these christians as we'll read uh one is foolish you know uh the apostle paul described these christians as foolish as bewitched crazy as some translations say, idiots, as some translations say. I mean, it's strong language, but it's meant to waken up people, you know, jar them awake from their deception because you are on a path of darkness when you live as a Christian like this. This is very dangerous. It's, it's, you are, it's a matter of life and death. It's a matter of victory versus defeat. If you live this way, according to the law, because that is the focus of, that is a, that's the point being made in Galatians, is that they were living, believing that they were being justified by their obedience to the law. And that is the way of being accursed as it says in Galatians 3, verse 10. So that's that's my little introduction. <laughs> and uh, let's just start here with Galatians 1, verse 6, okay? So here in the Living Bible, it says, I am amazed that you are turning away so soon from God, who in his love and mercy invited you to share the eternal life he gives us through Christ. Notice it's through Christ. It's not through the law. You are already following a different way to heaven, which really doesn't go to heaven at all. Ouch. For there is no other way than the one we showed you. You are being fooled. Remember that I mentioned that a moment ago. You are being fooled by those who twist and change the truth concerning Christ. Let's let God's curses. And I I just mentioned that, didn't I? So not only in Galatians 3, but also in Galatians 1 verse 8 and 9, it's talking about being accursed. Let God's curses fall on anyone, including myself, who preaches any other way to be saved than the one we told you about. Yes, if an angel comes from heaven and preaches any other message, let him be forever cursed. So those are very powerful words, aren't they? So we don't want to, you know, fall into turning away from Christ, do we? No. That will lead to a fruitless, unsuccessful Christian life. And, you know, just to maintain the point that we do have security in Christ, this is not talking about your eternal salvation. It's talking about living out your Christian beliefs in this world. Okay? So we can be totally filled with the dunamis power of Christ on the inside, and we are because of Christ. But as far as our ability to tap into that and walk in it and experience the successful life, that is determined by what do you understand of the gospel, right? Are you are you believing that you have to live uh, a, a good life. You know, you have to have your behavior always perfect and follow the Ten Commandments just tediously. You know, be, on, be at church on every Sunday, never be late, never, ever, ever lie, you know, I mean, I, and I need to say, while I list some of these things, that I'm not against good behavior. 
But I am against, as it says right here in the Word that we, we will be sharing, I am against you, uh, upholding those values as the measure of your righteousness before God. Or, or you could say, your, it, it's the standard by which God will have a relationship with you. I am against that. That is the way to being accursed, as we just read, right? So we aren't against the good works, but we are against the motivation behind these good works. Are you, are you, are those just fruit of the Holy Spirit that come forth effortlessly because you are so uh, pampered by his love? In knowing how much he has poured out in blessing you through Christ alone. Are those, is that good fruit of holiness coming for, just coming forth effortlessly because of your correct understanding of the gospel? Or are those uh Good behaviors really just uh, by the sweat of your brow. You know, you are just, oh, man, you are trying to be that good little Christian and it's becoming quite a burden for you. You see the difference? One is just because you are having such a good relationship with God through Christ and you're so aware of everything that he has poured out upon you freely by his grace or are you living by the law where you think you have to do this and do that and make sure you get your to-do list all checked off perfectly whatever your whatever your to-do list is I mean some people man they come up with their own to-do list and it's not even in the bible you know like um <laughs> some people think if you smoke you're going to hell you know, or just things that are not even mentioned in the Bible. But, or I guess some people, uh, another one is, you know, never cutting your hair or never wearing makeup, which, man, I definitely fall short on that one. You know, I got to get all gooeyed up for this videotaping. I'm <laughs> just being honest. Uh, Anyway, so you see my point. You can have a whole list of do's and don'ts and it's not even in the Bible. And yet you're burdened down. How crazy is that? As we will, you know, even Paul said that. You're crazy. You're nuts. Hello. You've lost it. So we'll be talking about some of those verses. And if you haven't read Galatians or you haven't read it recently, Read it again. It is a fabulous, quite a little book. It's just several pages, but it's so powerful. And it sets, it, it just keeps you in that safe zone because it sets you free with that liberty that Jesus came for us to enjoy. He didn't come to burden us down with more rules and regulations. You know, that's what burdens our conscience. You know, if your conscience is burdened down with guilt, you know, man, I just never get it done right, you know, or just, uh, it, you're meant to live a free, free life. That's, that's what it says in Galatians 5 verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ sets you free. So don't become entangled again to bondage to the law. So let's read again. Let's read a different verse here in Galatians 2. This is verse 4. And this is just perfect to what I was just talking about. And here in the Living Bible, it says, Even that question wouldn't have come up except for some, some so-called Christians there, false ones really, who came in to spy on us and to see what freedom we enjoyed in Christ Jesus as to whether we obeyed the Jewish laws or not. They try to get us all tied up in their rules 
like slaves in chains. But we did not listen to them for a single moment, for we did not want to confuse you into thinking that salvation can be earned by being circumcised and by obeying Jewish laws. Isn't that just so, those two little verses are so powerful. And I mean, really, slaves in chains? Is there anybody out there who wants to be enslaved? Enslaved as in like chains in your relationship with God. See how important this is. You know, you say the law. And people like may, might even yawn because it sounds like such a boring subject, but it's not. This is where the rubber meets the road as far as walking in a successful Christian life with God. And notice the perseverance. This is really, this is really spiritual warfare right here. It's not the traditional sense, spiritual warfare. But this is, this is the spiritual warfare that every Christian really, um, I would say daily, is challenged one way or another to fall into. You know, are you going to walk by the works of the flesh, by your own efforts with God, or are you going to rest and be free from those chains of enslavement and just roll those cares and that in, you know that perceived imperfection that you may think you have roll that over into God you aren't called to be your own savior you're called to enjoy and keep your focus on Jesus and as you receive from him all his wonderful grace gifts they're free, then you get so full on the inside that really beautiful fruit just pops out of you. And you, you, you know it's God because when that happens, it's kind of like you turn aside and you look at yourself on the outside and you're like, man, I know that was God because I know I can't do that. <laughs> So if you're faced with an impossible situation and you just kind of groan on the inside thinking, you know, here's something else I got to deal with. No, no, just take note of that because anything that involves groaning, <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say that because in the spirit we groan, you know, by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit groans too. But his way works, whereas our inner groaning, you know, I'm talking about of the flesh, you know, where you think, oh, I'm just so burdened down. I got to do this now. No, you want to take note of that and, and cast that off. Don't fall for it. Don't fall into that. And that's going back to that same verse here. It says, but we did not listen to them for a single moment. So you see, it's very, very day by day by day, even a single moment. They, these folks were very diligent. You know, they didn't, they didn't let it slide. You got to be on your toes, as you would say. You got to be watching what you think. What are you thinking? Are you thinking according to the law or are you resting in his peaceful grace, the unconditional favor, he favors you. You are at the top of the food chain. You are in Christ. There's no one, you aren't beneath him. You are there, as it says in Ephesians 2, verse 6, you are seated in the heavenlies in Christ at his right hand, in Christ. So we we don't have to try and climb the ladder to reach God by our own behaviors, but we just need to remind ourselves that we can rest because we're already, quote unquote, there at the top of the food chain, right there in Christ at the Father's right hand. 
So don't yield to that mentality even for a moment. And I noticed here, I like it here in Holman Christian Standard Bible, that verse, it says, we did not give up and submit to these people for even an hour so that the truth of the gospel would be preserved for you. So notice, to keep a pure gospel in your heart, you know, preserving it, keeping it pure, because that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about it's nothing else but Jesus. <laughs> you know, you don't add anything to Jesus. Jesus alone is sufficient for your relationship with God. You don't need to add, like I keep saying, your long list of do's and don'ts. And, you know, have you, have you prayed every day? Are you reading your Bible every day? Are you tithing and giving? And, you know, just all these wonderful Christian practices, don't get me wrong, but don't make that a burden for you to maintain thinking you need to do that to, to have a good relationship with God. Because your relationship with God is based on Jesus. Jesus alone. He is the singular mediator between you and God. You and God have now been joined together as one really true and truly that's not just pretend and you know a uh, uh, metaphor you know you really are one with god that's profound as it says in first corinthians 6 verse 17 if you want to look it up so if we're one with god why do we need to add anything else if jesus is sufficient and he is. Why are we worried with these these thoughts, these chains, these burdenous chains that of of um, right behavior that we have to do something else to receive from him? We receive every good gift freely through Jesus Christ, not through our own behavior, right? So don't yield to that mindset, that those little seed thoughts for even a moment. You got to stand against those things, right? And again, we can see that again also here in Colossians, actually. And here in chapter 1, verse 26, and I just love it here in the Message Bible, it says, this mystery has been kept in the dark for a long time, but now it's out in the open. God wanted everyone, not just Jews, to know this rich and glorious secret inside and out, regardless of their background, regardless of their religious standing. That mystery, in a nutshell, is just this. Christ is in you, therefore you can look forward to sharing in God's glory. It's that simple. I'm going to read that again. <laughs> it's that simple. That is the substance of our message. We preach Christ, warning people not to add to the message not to add to the message. We teach in a spirit of profound common sense so that we can bring each person to maturity. To be mature is to be basic. Christ, no more, no less. Wow. Is that just so straightforward? So notice and this is the big deal with many Christians is I want to grow in my maturity with God. Well, there you go right there. Contrary to religion, because religion just likes to pile on more, more to do stuff. You know, have you done this? Are you excellent in that? And it says right there, if you want to be mature in Christ, 
Well, don't add to them. That's how you be mature, is you are diligent to watch every moment that you are preserving the message, as it says there, which is the gospel, of course, the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not the gospel of you and all your good behaviors. Oh, look what I did for you today. God, aren't you just so impressed? When am I going to get out an award for that? You know, no, we are not in the position of getting brownie points with God based on our behavior. You don't you don't get to another level. How how can you even get higher? You're already at the highest position in Christ. <laughs> Why? Why would you think you're going to get to a a better position based on your behavior? See the deception? It's exactly very very actually I would say it's exactly like Adam and Eve in the garden. You know, the enemy came to Eve and said, well, if you really want to be like God, then you'll eat from this tree over here. That'll make you like God. So she looked at it and it looked appealing. Notice it was appealing. You know, it would taste good, looks good on the outside. So she was reasoning in her head. That's where you get into trouble when you start leaning on your own understanding and listening to the voice of the enemy who says, well, you need to do something else, you know. You haven't done your part yet. So that's where you want to shove the enemy and say, "Uh, yeah, I've done my part. I've believed in Jesus and that's all that's required, period. You know, get a righteous indignation when you hear those thoughts from the enemy because he's coming to trip you up and to kill you. That's what it says. That's what Jesus said in John 10, verse 10. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's the way he does it. He, he Just like he did Adam and Eve, he comes in sneakily. You know, saying, well, you know, you're not you're not made in God's image. Did you know, Eve? You need to eat this apple, you know, this fruit. We don't know if it's an apple or not, right? You need to eat this fruit over here. That'll make you wise like God. She totally disregarded the fact that she was made in the image of God. She was already there. She was already like God. <laughs> You know, so that's what the enemy gets you thinking, that you are insufficient, that you're incomplete, that you're missing something. No, with Christ, you are complete. You aren't missing one thing. Isn't that a relief? In God's sight, as it says in Hebrews 10, verse 14, you have been made perfect. Do you think God, do you think Jesus would leave out something When he hung on the cross, no, he did everything required and more to make you fully complete. And so you're not missing one good thing. And see, this is the thing, this this point I'm making is the, what you need to fight against, what you need to stand against, as I mentioned at the very beginning there, right? In uh, Galatians 2 verse, I'm sorry, Galatians 1 verse, no, it was 2, 2 verse 4, sorry. So we need to not submit to that mentality that you are lacking something, that you need to do something additionally before you are in right standing with God or to keep your right standing with God, okay? Okay. That's so, so, that's the crux of the matter. That is so very important. And that's having a pure conscience before God is what enables you to receive from God. So when we get bogged down with a condemned conscience because we're trying to live by the law, that prevents us from being able to receive from our Savior because of us, because of our own condemned conscience. 
Not because of God. God's pouring out his grace all the time, all the time. But if we're stuck in the, in a rut, so to say, thinking, well, I got to do this and I didn't do that. And you're just so overwhelmed with your own shortcomings that you can't see Jesus through all that mud. You know, you, you're just so covered up in your own sludge that you can't see Jesus through all that to receive from him, right? Ouch. And we don't want that. So that's why this message is so important. It keeps our vision clear and unobstructed with no cares for our own life. You don't want to be careful for anything, as Jesus literally said, be careful for nothing, <laughs> which includes your own behavior. Don't worry about it. God has already predestined you to be conformed to his image. It's a work of God in you, not your work. It's not your work. You're not your savior. It's his work to complete the good work that he started in you, as it says in Philippians 1 verse 6, right? It just always goes back to Jesus, always goes back to Jesus. We want to keep our lives simple, as we just read in that wonderful verse in, in the message. Let's read it again. To be mature is to be basic. Christ, no more, no less, right? So let's keep it simple. Keep your life simple. No extra work or effort required. And along that line, let's go here to Galatians 2 verse 16. So here also in the Message Bible in verse 16, uh, chapter 2, I think I said, we know, it says, we know very well that we are not set right with God by rule keeping but only through personal faith in Jesus Christ. How do we know? We tried it. And we had the best system of rules the world has ever seen. Convinced that no human being can please God by self-improvement, we believed in Jesus as the Messiah so that we might be set right before God by trusting in the Messiah not by trying to be good. So they kept it simple, remember? Simple. It's just by trusting in Christ that we are made and set right before God. And if we skip down here to verse 19, it says, what actually took place is this. I tried keeping rules and working my head off to please God, and it didn't work. So I quit being a lawman so that I could be God's man. Man, that's a quotable quote, isn't it? I quit being a lawman so that I could be God's man. I love that. Christ's life showed me how and enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion. And I'm no longer driven to impress God. Isn't that just so rich? And if you keep going down here again, verse 21, is it not clear to you that to go back to that old rule keeping peer-pleasing religion would just be an abandonment of everything personal and free in my relationship with God? I refuse to do that, to repudiate God's grace, or as it says in King James, I believe, to set aside God's grace. If a living relationship with God could come by rule-keeping, then Christ died unnecessarily. Wow. So as you can see over and over again, 
In context, it's talking about the law, the rule keeping, and Paul, Apostle Paul, who wrote half of the New Testament at least, he says, I refuse to do that. I refuse. He is adamant. And if he's that so persistent and so absolute and he is inflexible with this idea to add a little bit of law to his relationship with God through Christ. He said, no, I will not set aside the grace of God by doing that. I will not. And for for Christians to play this game, it's dangerous. And there's many Christians that do. I mean, I know lots of what people call Messianic Christians, for, for instance, where they keep the Torah laws, you know, the, the holy days. And, um, you know, they just think that's, that's so honorable toward God. But, I mean, look at that. that. We've read several times how dangerous, how awful living by the law is when you're a Christian. You become accursed when you live that way. So how in our right minds can we ever rationalize and think, oh, well, it's it's a good thing for us to practice these holy days. And I mean, I don't even know all of it, but, but basically Messianic Christians, they, they keep these traditions and they think that that is necessary in order for them to be in right standing with God. And that's deception. That is just blatant deception. Because we only have a right standing with God through Jesus Christ alone. As it says right there, that last the last verse we just read, if a living relationship with God could come by rule keeping, then Christ died unnecessarily. Bottom line, that was the last verse of that chapter. Bam! <laughs> you know, he, he is not playing. He's not beating around the bush. He's saying, Christ died in vain, uselessly. If you are thinking that, hey, we can just get 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 along with God fine by us keeping the rules. Let's just play the game. Let's be as good as we can be and that should be sufficient. No, that's not right. <laughs> that's that is totally wrong theology according to the New Testament gospel. Remember, we got to preserve the gospel. And that comes with effort. You can't just go with what seems reasonable. Remember, it's a slippery slope that the enemy plays with Christians. It seems appealing just like it did to Eve in the garden. And she fell for it. And you can too if you don't watch out. So we stand against that. And not even for a moment do we submit to that mentality. We resist it. And see, now you can maybe start to see what I'm talking about when I say this is spiritual warfare. Because it takes perseverance and diligence, really perseverance. This is a day in and a day out application. You can't just do this once and okay, I got it figured out and that's it. Now you practice, this needs practicing regularly. And when we don't, that's when you start falling away from the grace of God. When you are nullifying the grace of God, you're making it ineffective in your life. And that's how we all live a successful Christian life. It's only by the grace of God. But as we've been reading here, we can set aside the grace of God by living by rules. You don't want to live by rules and regulations and 
observations and holy days and obligations and you know <laughs> let's go here to uh similarly it says very it says very similarly what i'm talking about here in colossians and this is the message bible again it says colossians 2 verse 16 it says so don't put up with anyone pressuring you into details of diet worship services or holy days all those things are mere shadows cast before what was to come in other in other words in the old testament all these holy days and the practices of the law it was pointing to who was to come and that who or the substance is christ just what i'm talking about here right and if we scoot on down to verse 20, it says, So then, if with Christ you've put all that pretentious and infantile religion behind you, why do you let yourselves be bullied by it? Don't be punked around and pushed around trying to, oh, you, know, you better do this and you better do that. Like it says here, don't do this. Don't touch that. Don't taste that. Don't go near this. Do you think things that are here today and gone tomorrow are worth that kind of attention? <laughs> Such things sound impressive if said in a deep enough voice. They even give the illusion of being pious and humble and ascetic. But they're just another way of showing off making yourselves look important <laughs> don't you just love it there's so many good verses like that in the message bible it just it, in layman's terms god is saying you know don't be uh persuaded to follow after these rules and regulations and traditions and you know just the outward things they're gone they're here today and they're gone tomorrow and like it says right there the substance though you know contrasted to all those outward practices the substance is actually found in Christ Christ is truly life practicing outwardly uh, habits, you know, holy habits for the sake of your right standing with God is a waste of time. It's a waste of time. And eventually you get really tired or you get really bored. You know, I guess another, another practice that's crossed my mind right now, no pun intended, is, you know, when uh, certain religions, like I guess it's... Um, Catholics, maybe Episcopalians, I'm not sure, but they do even outward hand motions, you know, thinking that's holy. I mean, what's the point of that? It's just, some of the things is just amazing. It's, it's ridiculous. Come on. Let's be real. Okay. <laughs> As I usually am just calling a spade a spade. So, oh man, here we are. We're going to get to the nuts and bolts here. Let's get to chapter three of Galatians. He calls it out. So here in the Living Bible, it says, Oh, foolish Galatians. And this is what I was mentioning at the beginning. Some versions say otherwise, you know, crazy, idiotic. And that literally is what that word means. It's It literally means stupid. So, you know, when you fall into religion, you're falling into stupidity. Who out there wants to be a stupid Christian? You know, that, that's what we're talking about here. And maybe that's why some Christians say, it's so hard to understand God. It's, I don't understand him. Well, maybe you or that person is uh, contaminated by religious thoughts practices i mean it says right here these these galatians have had become stupid spiritually speaking 
you know, dull of understanding God. And when you are religious, that's what happens. You become, um, you're not quick, you know, hearing God. Your heart literally has become hardened. Like I said, sludge earlier, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's messed up. You know, you need a, you need a cleaning. <laughs> and re when you are of that mindset, a hard heart prevents you from hearing God clearly. So, uh, reading further, what magician has hypnotized you and cast an evil spell upon you? For you used to see the meaning of Jesus Christ's death as cl you used to see, you used to see as clearly as though I had waved a placard before you with the picture of Christ on, of Christ dying on the cross. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by trying to keep Jewish laws? Of course not. For the Holy Spirit came upon you only after you heard about Christ and trusted him to save you. See the contrast? Over and over and over again. We do not become saved by trying to keep the laws. We became saved and we continue to be saved by just trusting in Christ. Then have you gone completely crazy? For if trying to obey the Jewish laws never gave you spiritual life in the first place, why do you think that trying to obey them now will make you stronger Christians? If the old way, that's why it's called old, if the old way, the old covenant, the law, wasn't sufficient to save us, why do we think it's sufficient now? to save us. It's not. It's, it's not powerful one iota. You have suffered so much for the gospel. Now are you going to just throw it all overboard? I can hardly believe it. I ask you again, does God give you the power of the Holy Spirit and work miracles among you as a result of you trying to obey Jewish laws? No, of course not. It is when you believe in Christ and fully trust in Him. Okay, that went fully means fully. <laughs> you know, there's no room in there for, you know, packing in some laws. You know, you need to trust in Christ and do this and do that. No, just trust in Christ and live a peaceful life. Live an unburdened, free, easy life, as Jesus said in Matthew 11, right? He said, I came to give you an easy life. We're not meant to be feeling guilty for living an easy life. That's why Jesus came, is to loose that burden, take off that heavy yoke, and be free. Enjoy your liberty that you have in Christ, where you aren't, you know, ha having to obey a list of rules and regulations. It's just about Christ. Nothing added. Pure, innocent gospel, right? It's so refreshing, isn't it? It's just like it's I said earlier, it, this is the way to be mature. Christ and nothing else. I mean, that's what that's what Paul said. I I've determined I preach Christ crucified. Period. <laughs> you know? And so we just preach Christ, Christ, Christ. And then when we get so full of him, you know, through our understanding, by listening to what he's provided us freely, that's when we live the effortless, effortless, holy life. Now, if your, your behaviors 
are not lining up with what you would expect they would be, well, then it's likely that your focus is off. You're, you're thinking law. You're thinking, well, I did it wrong again. Or you're very me-focused. And, you know, I this is a strong message. And I just got to say while I'm thinking about it here, I'm not here meant to bash anybody. I'm here to encourage you and set you free. You know, if I come across strong, it's not meant to be um, off-putting. It's meant to be a strong dose of good medicine. You know, what medicine that you pull off the shelf, you know, uh, sometimes it doesn't have that cherry flavoring, you know, but the outcome is meant to make you feel better after taking it, right? I mean, it come, may be kind of yicky, yucky when you first hear it or when you first drink it, whatever, but it, the, the goal is for your good, and that's what that's what I'm here for. It's It's to help you live a successful Christian life. And if you are entangled up in the law, this may be ugh, maybe kind of grating on your nerves or maybe like, oh man, she's rude. I can't believe blah, 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 you know. But my intent is with a good motive. I just want to let you know that. Okay. So don't, don't become offended at the gospel. You know, it's for your good. And once you trust in it fully, fully, like it said right there, you will benefit so greatly. It'll, you will be like, man, why was I ever doing that before? Why was I wasting my time with the law before? Right? So let me see. One more verse. I just got to say, I might do two more verses, actually. (laughs) It's hard to stop. So in Galatians 4, verse 9, this is the Living Bible. This is uh, it's just so good. I'm, I'm, pick, I'm really picking out all the, the bomb, bombshells here. It says, And now that you have found God, or I should say that God has found you, how can it be that you want to go back again and become slaves once more to another poor, weak, useless religion of trying to get to heaven by obeying laws. See, that's a weak way. It's a useless way. You are trying to find favor with God by what you do or don't do on certain days or months or seasons or years. This is that, you know, worshiping the holy days, that kind of thing. I fear for you. I'm afraid that all my hard work for you was worth nothing. Okay? Oof. You know, he said, I'm afraid for you. See, this is a dangerous... You're playing with fire here when you start mixing in the law with Jesus. You don't want that mixture. You want to preserve the gospel in your heart. Just Jesus. It's all about what he's done. He's done everything. He's he he doesn't need me to add to it. I'm just going to enjoy my relationship with him through what he's done for me, not what I do for him, but what he's done for me, right? And Jesus put it so perfectly. Let me end here on this note in John 6. So here in uh, verse 28, it says, They said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Bam. (laughs) There you go. That's the end of the story. That's the beginning of the story. And that's the end of the story. Even, I mean, Jesus got it right. You would hope. Of course he did. I'm being facetious. You know, he answered them straight on. He didn't beat around the bush. He said, this is the work of God. You believe in the one whom God sent. And who was that? 
That's Jesus, right? So just trust in Jesus. You don't, you don't need the Old Testament laws, you know, rule keepings and obeying the holidays and the holy days and the da 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 everything you know jesus said love is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets so as we enjoy his love for us and through himself he is love we fulfill the law and the prophets through our faith in him right that's all that's needed. That's why it's called the New Covenant. Isn't that wonderful? So liberating, isn't it? I hope it is for you all. It's just And it's not something you just uh, check mark. Okay, I heard that message. But this is something that you really diligently, I would say, listen to this teaching at least a couple times and and, and practice it daily. Don't cave in for one iota of a moment, giving in to religious ideas, thinking you owe God something. Whatever you do, let it be done out of a... Th That's how you can tell, because I guess maybe some people may be wondering, how do I know if I'm doing something good with the right motive? Am I doing this because I have to? Or is this because this is Holy Spirit driven? This is, this is God in me working it out. How do I know the difference? Well, a real easy way is, does it give you joy to do it? Does it give you joy? Are you like, oh man, I can't wait to do that. Well, that's Holy Spirit. That's good motive. That's good motivation. But if you think, oh, if you kind of, like I said earlier, groan on the inside, well, you can tell it's your flesh that's trying to maintain that. And your flesh can't do it. That's why you're groaning. You're getting worn out. You know, you're trying to do it by your own strength. Well, just put it aside. And God has no problem with that. He'd rather you focus on Him then you waste your time trying to work up something good by your own effort. That's what you call literally dead works. That's works of the flesh. Dead works. And God has no delight in those, believe it or not. No delight. Because it actually, it's if you want to even be more technical... You could say that is antichrist. It's anti-Christ. You're, you're saying, oh, well, it takes this. It takes my effort, too. You know, you're putting yourself on the pedestal and saying, you need to do this and you need to do that. That's anti-Christ. We need to be pro-Christ, pro <laughs> right? Just Christ. He's, he's enough. He's more than enough. So I pray that you were encouraged and um, energized and liberated and, and uh, enjoyed this as much as I did. And keep at it. You know, let God carry the load and you just enjoy the ride. You know, just enjoy Him. Right? So you all have a, have a wonderful week, and I look forward to sharing with you again next time. Okay? Bye-bye.